we chatted uh, with Bob in the past about kind of ideal clients and more the the high level. You've always been the the science guy that Bob refers to as really the genius behind some of it. So I'd love to kind of go through similar things with you, um, you know, and more to give people an example of how much light really matters when it comes to, you know, growing crop, in this case, cannabis. You know, I want to really chat, you know, if you want to give maybe some examples of the lights you guys have created and what you've been able to produce, um, you know, versus, I guess, cro- like uh, environments that don't use your guys' lighting. Um, and just, just to give people a taste of really, like, how important are lights, but also how important are the lights that you guys create? Sure. So lighting, uh, just like any of the other environmental factors when you're growing crops and, and primarily, you know, the, the most uh, sought after crop uh, in North America right now is either hemp or, or cannabis, certainly the most talked about. Lighting can make the difference from something that sells for $5 a gram to something that sells for $25 a gram. And it all goes back to what we refer to as the McCree curve. Uh, The McCree curve refers to the spectrum of light in which plants use for photosynthesis. And so this is a pretty dynamic range from about 350 nanometers to about 720 nanometers. And you basically, you you wanna have a light that covers that full spectrum. Well, when LEDs first came out on the market, you see a lot of these purple things. Um, They're just a function of red and blue spectrum. And so you're getting massive spikes in those two parts of the spectrum, but you're missing everything else. And so where Bob was really a pioneer is he went um, through the literature and said, hey, clearly we want to create an LED light that is going to be what's called full spectrum, which covers the full range of the McCree curve. And uh, people probably referred to him as crazy because they're like, no, we just want to have these red and blue things because they're cheap and they don't break down. Um, Nobody really cares about full spectrum lighting. Now everyone is doing full spectrum lighting. Um, Where we've differentiated ourselves is that we also have supplemental red lighting in there um, to help uh, for flowering and in particular with cannabis include the phytochemical or enhance the phytochemical profile. If you look at our lights compared to other LEDs, compared to other technologies like uh, surrounding metal halide or high pressure sodium, um, what you're going to find is you're gonna find a substantially higher yield. Um, So for example, some of the the plants that we've seen are getting upwards of 1.6 grams per watt. Um, So for example, that's 1600 grams on a thousand watt light i mean that's an incredible yield whereas you might get only half of that with uh high pressure sodium and most people are stuck on high pressure sodium because that's what they started with uh they're certainly cheaper so there's a a lower capital expenditure but you're having to replace those bulbs all the time they generate a tremendous amount of heat whereas leds do not so you're going to have a higher cost of electricity higher cost of HVAC. And so now people are are starting to come around to LEDs. And part of, you know, and what what he touched on is, is part of getting over that hump for people is like, oh, you mean there are full spectrum LEDs? You're not just gonna sell me on this red and and blue light, you know, these purple lights. Um, And so once you show them the spectrum, and then you show them how the plants perform and then you back that up with analytical data that we're getting from third-party labs you know that's why we're we're getting such a phenomenal feedback from our clients and a lot of our our growth is very organic where for example in oklahoma you know we start with a large project there and the growers there are also you know interconnected with other growers throughout the state and so that leads to two or three other sales and we find that you know People just love our lights because they don't break down. They don't produce a lot of heat. They get fantastic results with them. Um, And the the plants look incredible. So uh, they're willing to pay a little bit extra um, for the top tier LED lights such as ours, as opposed to just kind of straggling along. Because again, in a state like Oklahoma, where you have thousands of people that have licenses to cultivate. I mean, the, the state of Oklahoma basically just said, 
you know, we're going to open this up. And if you have that, you can surpass the barrier of entry. I think it was like $2,000 to get your license and you have a PO box, we will give you a cultivation license. So obviously everyone and their dog, you know, and say, yeah, I'm going to make it rain gold bricks. I'm going to get into the cannabis space. And so the thing is, how do you really differentiate yourself amongst thousands of other growers when you're trying to, to sell your product either on the retail or the wholesale market? And it's either going to be in the cannabinoid profile uh, or the terpene profile, the smells, the aromas, the appearance, and all of that is going to be dictated by the lights that you use, the nutrients, the soil, and obviously the genetics.